A mom is kind. A mom is selfless. A mom is love. A mom is patient. So, so patient. A mom is supportive when no one else will be. A mom brings comfort and peace. And a mom sacrifices her wants and needs for the wants and needs of her children. A mom is a nurse, a chauffeur, a teacher, a referee. A mom is a personal assistant. A mom is a meal planner. A mom is an investigator. A mom is an event planner, a classroom volunteer, a professional organizer, a personal trainer, a personal stylist. She is an entertainer, a sleep coach, a handy woman, a poop specialist. Do I need to keep going? Hi. <laughs> Are you pooping? Yeah. Oh, that was not my intention. Meet some of our moms. Meet Rhonda. Rhonda is a wife and a mom of two boys, a two-year-old and a five-year-old. She owns and operates a store in Tennessee called Southern Scents, where they specialize in scented and whipped shea butters and wax melts. Meet Victoria. Victoria is a mom of a three-year-old little girl, and she's another entrepreneur. And Victoria specializes in early childhood education. Meet Lauren. Lauren is a wife and a mom of two boys, a three-and-a-half-year-old and a six-and-a-half-year-old. Another boss, she owns her own business and is an independent consultant with Rodan and Fields. Sherelle is a wife and a mom of three. Two little girls, a newborn and a nine-year-old, and a young man who is 16 years old. And if three kids wasn't enough to keep you busy, Sherelle is also the author of God Made Me Wait, the creator of a play called Views From Forever, and she and her husband have a podcast called Friends Who Smash. AD and I decided to do this episode to shine lights on our moms who are entrepreneurs, moms, and that are also dealing with this pandemic epidemic like the rest of us. How are they coping? Are they okay? What are they doing with their kids? You want to know how I'm doing in the Rona? It's, it's, it's better to, it's easier. She was pooping. She just had milk fly out of her nose and her mouth all at the same time. Can you help me, please, until I'm done? So what is your um, typical day without the Rona? So that's a that's a tricky question because you know I'm a new I'm a new I'm a mom of a newborn and you know it's like so I'm learning motherhood all over again so I haven't even had a chance to even get a routine because Corona came like immediately after me having her so my routine may have been get up feed her um, and clean up something. I don't know. I don't know what my routine would have been to be totally honest with you. My routine now is totally different because now I'm cooking breakfast for everybody. I'm washing clothes. I'm cleaning up. Um, I'm trying to recover from the night of no sleep. Um, so I don't even, Corona just took my privilege away to even see what my day would be like without her ass lingering in the air. I wake up at about maybe 5.45, 6 o'clock. I get my oldest son stone ready to go to school. He's in kindergarten. I take him to school. I might come home. I might get a nice little cup of coffee, be able to sit out on the back porch before the little one wakes up. When the little one wakes up, we have to do his whole routine. And then that just goes until either I or their father go to the store. So if I go to the store, I get a little break from them. And if I don't, then it's like lunch, snack, whatever business has to be done, and then dinner. So a typical day-to-day -day is uh, my oldest is in kindergarten, so he is usually shipped off to school by 7.30 in the morning. Uh, my youngest goes to preschool three days a week and, you know, occupied for about half the day. So during that time when my kids are gone, I'm usually working from home, um, getting stuff done for my family, running errands, um, can take that time to do stuff for myself, go to the gym, 
Um, and then my oldest doesn't get home from school till like 2.35. So that's a big chunk of the day where he's entertained and in school and taken care of. Um, and then the rest of the day just kind of like falls into place, coming together as a family. And so that's a typical day. <laughs> Um, so my normal day is, you know, wake up in the morning, I'm trying to incorporate more exercise into my life. So I try to wake up a little bit earlier and get a couple steps in, um, do some meditation. Um, in the car in the mornings is my time. So I don't talk on the phone in the mornings. I play whatever music I want to listen to. So if you sit next to me on the interstate, you literally will see me jamming like I'm in the club because it's my time. <laughs> um and then my work schedule is pretty flexible um sometimes I'm in Midtown sometimes I'm in Buckhead sometimes I'm in College Park it kind of just depends on what center is needing support um I'm usually home around six I try to do some things with my three-year-old to keep her active because she's at home right now she's going to start preschool when schools open back up um she doesn't really have a structured bedtime, which she probably should. <laughs> I just try to have in the bed by 9.30. How has your day changed with Rona being involved? Now they're just all here. Like, <laughs> give me this, do this. Did you clean this? Oh, where is this at? Could you go run and do this? Is this door open? I don't know. <laughs> because now we don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> we have nothing to do. So I've had to like fill in a lot of gaps, a lot of gaps. My kids, and Davina knows this, they wake up so damn early, <laughs> like before <laughs> the sun even comes up. So it is a long day to fill in those gaps, like I said, and to entertain them, to feed them, you know, to find stuff for them to do and try and you know stay sane and keep people from fighting each other and you know being a referee like so many things and it does not end until you know eight or nine o'clock it's a long day so a lot has changed because there's just we you know we don't have that normalcy the routine that we're used to how are the kids coping with being at home she does not like to be bored that's her thing like being bored will just make her like it will it will probably make her sad about not going to school so when it first happened she was a little sad she was like i'm not going to see my friends and things like that and so but you know what i've realized is that when you create a routine and they like that routine then they don't really have a lot of room to be sad anymore about stuff like they'll may she may have her moments but it doesn't like set in and she's like sulking all day like as long as she has something fun to do she's good they um they uh, they are pretty social you know my kindergartner loves school um so that's been the hardest for him um the first week uh he was really emotional about it because he you know, just wanted to see his friends. And, and how long have they had, I'm sorry to cut you off, how long have they had them um, out of school in Virginia? Um, so we have basically not left our house in 14 days, 15 days, something like that. Um, uh, they, what day is it? I honestly don't, <laughs> I don't know what day it is. Um, so actually, my daughter has done very well with the adjustment. I think just because we are at my sister's house, it, you know, she's like, oh, we're on vacation. She just thinks that we're on vacation because typically when we are on vacation, we come here to visit for a couple of days as well. Um, so she's actually done really well. She doesn't understand why she's having to wash her hands so much when she comes in. And she's also not understanding why she can't go to the park because typically we're always at the park here. Um, she hasn't been able to go to any grocery stores or anything like that just because she has severe asthma. Um, so I'm trying to keep her away from as much as possible. Um, but the pollen is really bad, so that's kind of yeah. triggering it as well. So are you letting the kids go outside at all to play with their friends? I haven't even let Gabby outside, like, to ride her bike or anything because I have I know a friend personally who mom has the virus who's infected, and now she's infected with it. And then a, a few friends of mine who 
have friends that have passed. And I'm like, this shit is scary. Like, I'm not living in fear, but also I'm not going to do nothing stupid to put, you know, our family in, in jeopardy. So it's, it's very hard because I love to go to the grocery store and I love to cook and I like to cook different stuff. And so just going to the grocery store, I have anxiety now. Uh, like, have you explained to them what's going on? Do they understand what's going on? I've explained to Gabby and Gabby was like, oh, mommy, <laughs> it's so funny. Cause she was like, mommy, this isn't your type of virus, but this definitely is your type of virus. This way everybody can do exactly what you want them to do and wash their hands and wash their face and wash their clothes. But I, I did explain to her and actually her counselor called this morning to talk to her about it. Gabby is very, um, she's almost like an adult. So she doesn't take things like a normal kid will take it. And she's like, well, you know, maybe it's good for the earth. And maybe this way people will stop um, throwing things out of their car when they're driving it. And maybe people will stop uh, creating problems for the fish in the sea and things like that. So that's how she looks at it. She doesn't really have any fear about it. No. It's like... Home from school. That's all they need to You do. know, which <laughs> knows he's not at school. Yeah. He just knows that he's home from school. JJ just knows everybody is here. He might not even know that. He might not care. <laughs> His day is up in the air. He does whatever he wants. But Stone, who is not in school right now, he doesn't know what's going on. And he probably, even if I explained it to him, I feel like for me as a parent, I wouldn't want to panic him. Mm -hmm. Because a kid won't grasp fully, like, we're okay. You know, we're in the house. We're being safe. They will just grasp that, oh, my God, the outside air is bad. And then he won't want to go out and play. And I cannot have that. So I'm not going to tell him about that. So they're still getting outside. Still like 10. That's good. And it's far <laughs> away, hopefully. I've explained to her, I think yesterday, it hit her for the first time. Um, she asked can she go to the aquarium? Mm. And typically it's like, yeah, we'll go in a couple of days or whatever. Uh, I had to explain to her that there is no aquarium right now. Well, where are the animals? So I had to explain, you know, what was going on and how if we touch services. So we've done the, the hand experiment to show the dirt and the germs and all of those good things. But I think at this age, it's still a little bit confusing. Uh, my niece understands it. She completely understands, no, Amira, we can't go anywhere because there's a coronavirus. It's germs that get into your body and can make you really sick. Her, on the other hand, she just understands that we can't touch anything. Everything else is kind of like, well, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. So not to overload her with anxiety, because at that age, they can still have it. Um, I just tell her, we're not touching anything. We're not going anywhere because people are sick. We have to stay inside. Have you been able to carve out some time for just you? Any mommy me time? I, I'm, I'm whispering and I got the door locked right now. <laughs> we won't come in the room. Like, no, no. Um, maybe like 10, 15 minutes in the beginning of the day before anybody wakes up, I might be able to go sit on the back porch. But the carpentry bees had a different plan. How are you and the hubby doing? How are you guys coping? You know, it's been tough. It has not been easy. Um, our roles haven't really changed, like you said, but um, it's a lot of time spent together. And I think in, in marriages, most marriages, I think like there's opposites, you know, and Greg is like my complete opposite. And he is more of like the glass half full, positive outlook, like everything's gonna be okay. Like he's a like cheerleader. And I need somebody like that because my mind goes the opposite way. You know, like I get like panicky and, you know, with all the uncertainty and stuff. And, you know, you have to have somebody. It's got to be somebody in the partnership. There's got to be somebody that's like a float on top of the water. That's like, okay, we're going to be okay. And Greg has been that person. I have not been that person. So and, you know, it's been hard, like, I'm dealing with my own, like, anxiety and just being scared and sad and stuff. And then, you know, I'm trying to hold on to my kids 
you know, and be like positive and, you know, supportive for them. And it's almost like they're not dragging me down, but it's, it's just like something else, another weight, you know? Yeah. Um, But for us, he is, he's above water for sure, which I'm thankful for because he's put like the, just these last two weeks have been, you know, I've gone to dark places and I've been real sad and, you know, he's been able to pull me out of stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Every, every household. Hey, but it's two weeks. It's been two weeks. <laughs> it's like that. I'll, it. report, I'll <laughs> report back. <laughs> Do you have any advice for moms that are now home all day with the kids? First, I would say is make sure you take some time out for yourself, whether it be a long hot shower, a facial. I tried to pluck my eyebrows this morning. Um, I had chin hairs going like crazy. I said, you know what, (laughs) let me get rid of these because as a woman, I need to feel good even though I'm in the house. Um, So I would say making sure that you dedicate a moment of your day to yourself and, and not to feel like giving to yourself is too much. Because what we're going through right now is a lot for us as women, not just as mothers, but as women to really sit down and process, it's really difficult for us. Um, I would say activity-wise, keep them as engaged as possible. Um, Sensory activities, science activities, things that really trigger their what's going to happen next mind will really keep them engaged. I know outside time is really difficult, especially with all the pollen and all that type of stuff. Um, So, you know, building forts in the house, keeping boxes and building a spaceship or building a, you know, STEM robot. Name something positive that has come from this whole Rona situation. Oh my God, you can be home to help and you don't have to worry about going to work tired. <laughs> like we could just sleep all day and stay up all night. Let's just be on her schedule until she changes her schedule. So it's been good. We've been able to, um, you know, we have a podcast, Fresh Who Smash podcast, so we've been able to actually work on that and line up, you know, interviews and really focus on that because I haven't, when I was pregnant, I was too sick to even focus on it because that's my area. I focus on the podcast stuff and I'm just like, I'm too tired to deal with that. So now, you know, I'm up, I'm like, all right, let's do this. Let's get our gas. Let's do all this. Um, And so we've been able to focus on that. We've Mm -hmm. been able to focus on the play um it's just been good and and you know I've been doing things with Gabby helping her with her cooking and and just being creative with her spending more time with her because also again when I was pregnant she would she told me she's like you don't really talk to me anymore I talk to you and you just listen so now I can talk to her now because I'm not sick you know what I mean and it's just it's just a it's a good thing Gabby gets to spend time with the baby more time she doesn't have to wait to come home from school um it's oh, just yeah good. That, that's good actually. yeah yeah yeah, she gets to spend that time with her. So it's 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 been good. And me and Black are um we we are we are spending time together that we we're actually learning the baby together. So it's not like, oh baby, this is what happened with the baby today, or she doesn't like this, or she this, 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 this. We're learning it together. So it's not like, you know, sometimes with new parents. Well, I can't say new parents, but I'll say new parents because both of us knew because we old as hell having a little baby. But um, (laughs) we, you know, sometimes one parent can feel like that parent knows more than the other one. So the other one feels kind of slighted and things like that. So we don't have to. We had that in the beginning when he was working. But now it's just like we know, you know, we know what she needs and we know how to do it and we're on a schedule. So it, it, it's, it's just, it's been good to have him home because I have, and I have separation anxiety. So like if he's at work all day and I have to deal with the baby, that like is a trigger. So I haven't been triggered lately and it's just been good. It's, it's been peaceful. It's been fun eating and, um, you know, just, just relaxing and, and, and yeah. And taking it all in and, and just trying to figure out what we're going to do when all of this is over, when is whenever it's over, what, what we're going to do. So being able to create yeah. game plans and talk about the business because we haven't in a while is, it's just been refreshing. You know, it helps a lot with taking your mind off of what's actually going on outside. 
in general, I feel like, first of all, I live, I wish I could just let you see outside the window. It's very idyllic outside. And you can see that people are starting to do, the tablets aren't fully entertaining the kids anymore, which is a good thing. Amen. They want to go outside. They want, so I see people with radio flyers, the little pool, uh-huh. whatever. I can see them like walking their kids around the neighborhood. I have every last neighbor. I've met all the neighbors around me because they just want somebody to talk to. <laughs> like they're tired of being in the house. Personally, inside of the home, um, meals being cooked. I mean, I like to cook, but when stuff gets difficult, you order out, you go to a restaurant, you have McDonald's or whatever. And because we're not out as much, there's more like cooking. Um, my oldest son, the five-year-old, has expressed that he likes to see us all sit at the t- table and eat dinner. Oh, Almost God. every single day, we are all at the table to eat at least dinner. Even breakfast. Usually, I would just make breakfast for the kids and then sit at the couch on, and watch the TV. <laughs> and now, like, the TV in the living room doesn't even come on. I sit at the table and eat breakfast with them like at their father. Their father still has stuff he has to do. So, you know, we still have the store that has to be looked after, at least gone to visit at least a couple of times. Um, the gym that they work out of is still open for some of the kids to play like basketball, at least to keep their skills up. So he gets to leave sometimes. So sometimes just me and them, I still sit down at the table and eat breakfast with them. So that's a big deal. Like doing family stuff has come back because you have to exhaust all the possibilities. Yeah. You know, there's all these memes and stuff that go around on Facebook and social media and all that stuff and like the ridiculous ones you know the ones that just like make you laugh whatever and then I saw one the other day where it was like a a a child um talking to his parent like 10 years from now and he's asking questions like remember that time like there was a pandemic or something and and the mom's like explaining like yeah they they shut down stores, they shut down restaurants, you know, people couldn't go to work, they were stuck inside, people were hoarding food, and it was a really scary time, but the way the child sees it, like, 10 years from now, is like, I don't remember any of that, like, I remember us being together, and I remember us, like, you know, all the family being home, so, you know, going through, like, everything that's scary, and, you know, try all the pressure of like having the kids home and you know doing school at home and stuff like that that's kind of brought me back because I I think about that now you know not so much of like we're trying to survive and this is like a crazy situation but it's it's just like you know let's just focus on this because this is what what we can control two things for one family time because you always want to spend more time, but you never have any time. Yeah. So I, the time that we are able to spend is uninterrupted time. You don't have anywhere to go. You don't have anything to do. You actually get to have conversations. You learn some things that you probably really didn't know. Um, and then two, dive within myself. I, I've made sure to really focus on me um, and, at peak times of the day for my business because I really have wanted to thrive but I haven't had the time to thrive Mm -hmm. you know with work and a child and more work it's kind of like when do you really have the time and the opportunity and if I don't come out these next 30 days with a completed business ready to boom there's a bigger problem at hand amen so this is the time that you know I, I tell people he's God is asking us to be still We're not listening currently, but he's telling us to be still. And until we be still and are really able to hear what he is saying, the pandemic will continue to move forward. Yeah. So I'm trying to be still. (laughs) (laughs) Thomas, did you poop again? No. You did. What's in your pants? Pants. Boop, boop. No.